we'll be recording of the session this evening. So hello, Christine and anyone else who might be joining us. Um, welcome to Parents Guide to Virtual Learning Technology. My name is Tracy Cummings McGreal. I'm the administrator here at the ADP Center for Learning Technologies. We're located in University Hall. Um, please feel free, you can reach out to me at any time at my email, cummingst2 at montclair.edu. And just like you, I, I have kids. I have a 12 year old and a 16 year old. Oh, wait a second. Okay, Christine, I see you made it back. So this is what we're told virtual learning looks like. As you can see in this picture, there is a little girl with her book and she's smiling at her iPad or this other little girl, she's probably in first grade. She has on her headphones and she's sitting there independently doing her work. Or you see the dads helping their kids with their math homework or whatever assignment they have. And if you look in the lower right hand corner, there's a mom with an infant on her lap who's, you know, just chilling out. And uh, her other daughter is doing an assignment, probably also in first grade. Now, if we were to think about what virtual learning is really like, this is not, an, you know, an accurate picture. I think this is more <laughs> of an accurate picture of what virtual learning looks like. As you can see, the parents are frustrated. Uh, the, the kids are frustrated, uh, the parents are trying to get their work done and their kids want their attention so they might be acting out. And I just totally get a kick out of this mom in the lower right hand corner who's biting the laptop because obviously she's so frustrated she can't take it. So, um, oops. so let's talk about some of the things that can help us. Um, before I get into multi-timer, you know, this is a really hard time for parents. There is about a million moms that have had to leave, to leave the workforce to help kids with virtual learning. And for those of us that still have jobs, we have to navigate um, virtual learning with our younger kids and we're trying to work. And sometimes we're working at off hours to try to catch up. So I have a lot of empathy for all moms and dads that are, um, you know, trying to get through the pandemic. Uh, and we have to remember to be patient with ourselves. And we forget this sometimes because we've been kind of in this holding pattern for about a year now. So I'm hoping this chapter will um, be coming to a close soon. But that being said, in order to put this workshop together, I ended up interviewing teachers, some professors um, in different districts and at Montclair State University to chat about like what might be helpful um, for kids. And this particular workshop is for kids of all ages. I do, uh, I also do a workshop for K to pre-K to five, but this one is geared more towards all kids that are in school. And I'm curious, um, Christine, I see you're there. I don't know if you can um, either type it in the chat or let me know how old are your kids so hopefully I can gear this workshop a little bit more toward um, what you might be uh, needing some assistance with. So while you might be putting that in the chat, I'm going to talk about our first app called Multitimer. And I think this is a great app, whether you have young kids, um, kids are, at this age, kids are not very self-directed right? So a timer is good for pacing. So you can put it like if your son or daughter needs to read for 30 minutes, you can't be there um, to sit and read with them. You can put one of these timers on so that you know that they're there for like 20 minutes, depending upon their time. Um, or you may have multiple kids that you're trying to manage through virtual learning. So I really like this app called Multitimer because you can have uh, different timers going. And it's nice because it has a, a pretty interface. And if you look here, you know, it has different types of timers that you can use and set them up. So it makes life a little bit easier for you. Um, and the other thing I really love about multi-timer is um, the timer is the bad guy, which I thought was kind of silly. <laughs> 
um, when one of my friends told me about um, using a timer. So of course, uh, in virtual learning, you know, our children's, you know, what our children need to do and what they want to do are two different things, right? So, you know, children need, children. To, um, need to do their work, but maybe once they finish their homework, they can, you know, maybe you want to give them some extra screen time. So that being said, you can utilize a timer for, you know, a half an hour, an hour or whatever time that you negotiate with your child. And then when that time is over and the timer goes off, then the timer's the bad guy. Sorry, the timer went off. You need to get off your device now, right? I mean, sometimes there's still a little, um, kids get upset when they have to get off their device, but you know, after a couple minutes of a, um, a meltdown, generally like that subsides and they move on to something else. So multi-timer is only available for iOS, um, but I have another app here and we'll go to that one called OK Timer. And this one is very similar. This one is available for Android and they're both free, which is really nice. So let's move on to the next slide. Block site. Um, just like you know, kids, just like we as adults, we get distracted. I know sometimes before I have a meeting, maybe you're like on, you know, you're going on Instagram and, and we get distracted. It's just a normal. Um, so three girls came when I came out. Um, Christine, would you mind just muting, putting your microphone on mute? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, wait, so where was I? Right. So, um, What's great about BlockSite, it's a free website, and what it can do is block any site that you choose uh, so that your children can finish their work. So it works across devices. So if you have it on their computer and their phone, it will block across those. Because it would, you know, if you just blocked it on the computer, they could just go on their phone. So it's great that it works across devices. It's available for iOS and for Android. Um, and you could also block by category, maybe for your, like for my daughter, she doesn't use social media. So I would only block games for her because that's, that's her temptation. Um, so I just think that that's a really good way to help increase their productivity and not get distracted and hopefully finish their work. So let's move on to classroom dynamics. So I was just curious, I see Naomi, you also joined. How old are your kids? Hi. Hi. Um, my children are ages 10, 4, and 2. Okay, so you have you have the younger, the younger kids. So I think this will be really helpful for you. Um, so classroom dynamics, the teacher's job in the classroom, he or she is the classroom manager, right? But virtual learning is, you know, they've kind of been thrown into the, you know, with the pandemic, they're kind of still learning on the fly, especially for older teachers that are not as tech savvy. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that parents become the, the classroom manager, right? And kids behave, behave much differently in school than they do at home. It's so funny. One of my friends was also a teacher. She calls her daughter a street angel because she behaves perfectly in school. But when she comes home, you know, she's like, annoyed and, and frustrated and she treats, you know, she has different interactions with her parents than she does with her teacher, right? So you have to take that into account when you're home with, with your kids. And Naomi, I really, I really feel for you having three young kids, um, you know, in, uh, in elementary school. So um, getting back to what I was saying, one thing that I try to remember is a counseling technique called HALT. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Um, it's, you know, when kids are sitting on virtual learning, especially for the younger kids, they have a very short attention span. Um, you know, and maybe they're gonna have a meltdown when you're trying to do your, you know, you're trying to do your work. And what I generally ask myself when my kids act this way is, are they hungry? Are they angry? I generally think it's more frustration. Um, maybe their meat isn't working right. Maybe they can't access something. Um, and I think during the pandemic, a lot of us feel kind of lonely, even though we're all cooped up at home and our, our kids feel the same way. And I don't know about um, either of you, but I have not had a strict bedtime with the pandemic, which is my own fault, but I, my kids are tired sometimes, right? So I try to think about that and not just them be feeling this way. I feel this way too. 
sometimes I'm the one who's tired that I'm tired. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is be curious about your child's work strategies. Now, maybe for younger kids, this might not be um, as applicable, but like I know my daughter, when the pandemic started, she was in fifth grade. And my older daughter, she's the type of person that says, okay, I have five assignments to do. I'm going to get them all done. And then I have me time. But my younger daughter is not that type of person. She, you know, needs to take a break. She needs to get a snack. She needs to take a walk. I mean, she gets her work done, but she just doesn't go about it in the way that I would want her to, right? Because of course you want them to get it done. So then I don't have to think about it anymore, right? But if your child is more independent and can do some of these things on their own and it just takes them a little longer, um, I just try to be a little, I try to work with my daughter more so that she's able to finish it and not be too stressed out. Um, another thing is if you have room to designate a space for your child to do their virtual learning. Um, I know in my house space is at a premium, um, but you know, a lot of times my daughter will do her work at the kitchen table. Um, but I try to switch it up for her because I don't want her learning at the table, eating at the table, right? Like, or maybe your son or daughter is using their bedroom. You know, they're on their bed, they're sleeping in their bed, they're on their phones in their bed, they're doing school in their bed. They need to break it up. It's just better for them emotionally. Um, and the other thing too is younger kids need a lot more physical support, right? We need to be there, help them get on the meet, answer their questions while the teacher is, you know, doing something else. But with older kids, when you have a fourth grader or above, they can do things a little more independently and they might need more emotional support. So that's just what I wanted to mention about, um, about that. The other thing too is keep Clo in close contact with your child's teachers, right? Squeaky wheel gets the grease. So teachers do want to hear from you. I have uh, several of the teachers that I interviewed did say that they really want to hear from parents. Um, the other thing that I thought was really interesting, especially for younger kids, um, I remember last year my daughter was struggling. Um, she had some kind of assignment to do for a library. I basically said, Charlotte, you're in fifth grade. You don't have to do this assignment because it was too stressful for her. So I think it's important to talk to your teachers and say, hey, you know, our family is struggling or my, my son or daughter is struggling. Uh, math should not take an hour for them to complete at night. Like these kids that are in elementary school, they should not be working on homework at night, especially one subject for like an hour. If it's taking them that long, it's too long. I think, you know, and I think a lot of teachers would also agree with me. They have mentioned this to me that, you know, if they work on it for a half an hour and they don't complete it, just submit that. Or you can ask the teacher, you know, I, this is a really hard, my, my son or daughter is, is struggling. What's the most important thing for them to finish? And I think starting a conversation like this with the teacher will help them understand um, your son or daughter better and will help you know, you to figure out and to t say, look, they really need to finish math, but if they don't get to the reading today, that's fine. Maybe you could do it over the weekend, right? It, I think we're just putting way too much pressure on ourselves and our kids. And what's really interesting is when the pandemic started on the college level, professors were saying to students like, look, just reach out to me. I understand professors and universities said you can take a pass fail. You don't even have to have a grade. And these are adults. I mean, the, ch the kids in school or, you know, they're adults. Why don't we have the same type of thing in play for, for younger students, right? Yeah. Um, the, oh, Tracy, go ahead. I, I wanted to say that really um, resonated with me. Um, like my oldest son, he's in fourth grade and he gets a lot of work during the time he's virtual. Mm -hmm. And so I found that he was doing a lot of work after, like when he was done, like an hour, two, three hours. And I'm like, TJ, no, like he's been on a computer like all morning, mm -hmm. like till 1, 1 30 in the afternoon. So I talked to the teacher and um, what I like about it now is that. Oh no. She... Oh, I hope Naomi comes back. Um, I guess I'll just move on to the next thing. And then if she comes back, 
uh, we can, she can chat about uh, her story some more. Um, the thing I wanted to mention was have students collaborate on homework, especially for kids fourth grade and up, right? They're becoming a little more independent. And if you think about how teaching has changed even on the collegiate level, um, professors are having students do group work. Um, they also ask a question in the chat and have students not only respond to the question, but also respond to each other. So collaboration is not only important in school, but it is in life, right? Um, another thing is if you have older siblings, have them help the younger ones because it helps with them being becoming responsible and it also helps them to develop empathy, which I think is really important. So let's move on to Google Suite and Zoom. So Google Classroom. Christine, do your kids use Google Classroom? I don't know if she can hear me. Um, so basically what I wanted to talk about Google Classroom is I can actually show you how to use it. Um, I think one of the most important things is if you have younger kids, have a list of your child's passwords printed out. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's still not back. Um, there you are, Naomi. I was hoping you would come back. Did you want to finish your story? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, my no computer worries. just completely died. I've been on here all day working. Um, yeah, so I was saying that my oldest son was getting a lot of work, but now what I like about the school is on Fridays, he doesn't have like any work. He just has to do attendance. So Friday is kind of like a makeup day. Mm -hmm. So for example, like you mentioned earlier, like, okay, you did your math, but can you do your literacy later? Like, so if that happens, he has Friday to kind of like, like a makeup kind of day. And it's not so stressful. So whatever work he didn't get done, like if he missed one of his deliverables from Tuesday night, or I'm not Tuesday night, but Tuesday, he had an ELA deliverable. He could s still submit it and get credit for it. And he could submit it on Friday. So Friday, he doesn't have like class. He doesn't go online. He just like, kind of, then if he doesn't have any work to do, then I just make him um, do his 20 minute of reading. And um, he has something called Zern in his school. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like 15, 20 minutes of Zern. And then like, he basically has a three day weekend. So I try to encourage him, like do all of your work Monday through Thursday. And then Friday, you have kind of a really light day. But if you don't have any, like you miss a deliverable or two during the week then you have Friday to kind of make it up and then off Saturday and Sunday. Good. And you know what? It sounds like the teachers understand a little bit better and they're being a little more flexible with their students, which I think is really important. And since you just rejoined, I just wanted to mention like a couple of things because you um, got kicked out. So um, one of the two things, because you do have a fourth grader. So um, having students collaborate on homework if they're fourth grade and over I think is really helpful if you think about how the teaching model has changed even in um, even in higher education uh, students do group projects they collaborate on homework and now with the technology they can collaborate right in the document um, and also like students professors uh, will ask a question and then ask their students to respond. And then what happens is students are talking to each other. They're putting their own comments regarding a, a specific topic or question that the teacher, that the professor posits, and then they're learning from each other. So that's why I think col uh, collaborating and using your resources is really important if your kids are um, over fourth grade. And the other thing too is if you have older siblings, have them help the younger ones because it helps, um, kids be responsible and it helps them to create empathy, which I think is really important. Um, so now I wanted to go over Google, uh, the Google suite and um, Zoom. So I was curious if anybody had any questions about using Google Classroom, do you feel like you're an ace at this? You could show me a thumbs up or whatever, um, or do you feel like you need help with 
with Google Classroom because I could go into like a lot of detail about it, but it's it's really up to you. It's it's just three of you, so I'm happy to answer any like personal questions about your child's learning experience that I can be helpful and, and help you with. So for me, Tracy, I don't have any specific questions. Okay. Um, my um, son uh, school showed us how to put the app on my phone. Mm -hmm. And so I get like all of his alerts um, to my phone. Like when he has a deliverable due, when he needs to submit an attendance, it co it's come through through my phone. So I'm kind of like staying on top of him. Like, well, TJ, did you get this done? And I saw you had this um, assignment. And so I just use it through my phone. I don't really use it like okay. on a computer. And honestly, um, that's fine. Like if you, yeah. like honestly, like you always have your phone on you, right? So, you know, if you have your phone and you, what Naomi is talking about is something that I have here on the slide called the guardian summary. Naomi gets a guardian summary about what her son, um, what he's been doing in the classroom, if he has any missing assignments. But in order for you to get this guardian summary, you have to ask the teacher. So if you're in K to five, you just have to ask your classroom teacher. Um, I'm not sure in high school if you have, to, I don't think you have to ask each individual teacher or maybe you have to just call the school and ask them in the main office. Like I, I wanna get the guardian summary. And what they do is they generally send you a link and then that way you'll be getting an email and you can choose like I want, I want the, the summary every day, or I want the summary once a week. If your kids have a lot of assignments and you choose the once a week option, you're gonna get a, a lot, a big email at the end of the week. So it's just up to you what your preference is. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too, is that as your kids get older, they should know how to contact tech support. If your kids are like in middle school, they should know how to contact tech support themselves. Um, it's important for them to start taking these steps. Like I remember when my oldest daughter was younger, I would coddle her a little bit and she was not, she was six years old and she was still asking me to dress her. So you could kind of guess where this is going. <laughs> so basically what I had to do, I realized that I was not, um, giving her the agency to do things for herself. So, um, that's why I just, I put this here in, in the slide. So if nobody has any questions about how specifically to use Google Classroom, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. Um, so Google Drive, the Google Drive is basically like a virtual filing cabinet. Um, it's all stored in the cloud. You can file documents, share documents, sync docu documents. You can drag and drop them into the drive. So it doesn't have to be a Google Doc that you store in there. I've put PDFs in there. Um, and all of anything that's um, a Google, part of the Google suite works best in the Chrome browser. So you can see here, if anybody needs any assistance on how to navigate these, I can go off the slide and show you live. Um, Google Docs and Google Slide for Naomi, her kids are younger, so they're probably using platforms like Zern um, and uh, Brain Pop and things like that. And but dojo. You, right. Yes. Class mm -hmm. dojo. Yes. Um, if your kids are older, they're probably using Google Docs and slides to create either complete assignments or create um, like a slide presentation with maybe by themselves or with a group. Um, and as I said before, Google Docs is great because it could be shared with a group of students and they can collaborate on projects simultaneously in real time. Um, one thing I did want to show you, I, um, let's see, I'm going to move over to, oops, hold on, let me just, I'm going to choose the desktop. Okay, so you can see the screen that says Google Docs and Slides, Naomi, or no? You asked me, can I see it? Yeah, you could see this, the slide presentation that I was just on, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So um, what I wanted to show you in my drive, um, like I'm doing, I'm doing a, an exit survey. So when you have a document at the bottom, see this little I don't know, this icon, it says explore. 
when your when your children are working on projects, if they click this button, it actually gives you information. So, like the since this is a survey, it gives me research. But if I were to go into, for example, the this the presentation, if I click on it down here, it's going to give me pictures that I could put in there, um, different slide layouts, so you could choose um, different um, like slide decks. To you have different ones to choose from. So I think this is really helpful as like a little assistant for your kids to try to get some, like if they're doing a book report or something, I think that's really helpful for them. Um, let's go to Google Meet. So how many of you use Google Meet in your district or how many, like do you use Google Meet or do you use Zoom? My son mainly uses Zoom. Okay. Um, I've tried Google Meet. I don't really like it that much. Like, um, I was in a meeting with it and it, I had a problem logging in. So he uses Zoom for his school though. And, um, my four-year-old, he's in pre-K, he uses Zoom too. That's great. Class dojo. Great. I think Zoom is definitely better, but it depends on your district. My district uses Google Meet. Um, and some of this that I have here on the slide is basically some just etiquette, like that students should mute themselves. Um, what's interesting about Google Meet is that only teachers can start or host a meet. So if you wanted kids to collaborate, they can't do it on Google Meet. They'd have to either do it on um, FaceTime or WhatsApp. Um, one of the things I really like for kids, especially with younger kids, is messenger kids it's part of the facebook platform but it's just for kids and the, the parent has complete control over it who they friend um and whatnot so if they wanted to collaborate on something they could do it over facetime um so i just wanted to mention that we'll go to the next slide um if you're not using google meet i'll just mention this super quick in case sally or christine their kids are um, you know, kids, they always try to go the path of least resistance. So uh, <laughs> not all the time, but sometimes anyway. And what would happen is kids would download this visual effects where it would freeze them in, in the classroom and they would just walk away and do something else. So I think it's important for us all as parents to just be cognizant of what our kids are doing. Obviously this is more for older kids. So what would happen is they would freeze themselves and not be be uh, president class. I also realize I need to check on my kids, even though they're older. Um, I went down and my daughter was in the basement and she was on a Google Meet for school and she was also playing her switch. So I had to stop that. <laughs> so just be mindful. Sally, did you have a question? Yes. Um, sorry, I just got off another conference, a full day conference. So <laughs> um, you're a warrior. I, I, um, I teach and I use Google Meet. And um, I also use Zoom for, um, my kids use Zoom. So my, is there a way, you know how in Zoom you could, uh, you could hide um, non-video participants? Yes. Is there a way to do that in Google Meet? That's a good question. You know what? I'm gonna write your question down. I'm not really sure. Um, and I can always just, you know, email you. Generally like after the Zoom meeting, um, you'll get like an email from the ADP center and you can, you know, feel free to like respond. And um, I'm more than happy to like look it up and see if. Um, I, I mean, I did ask my our tech guys a while ago and they said you could download an extension, but they yes. said that you have to keep updating it and kind of messes up the system. And yes, I'm not oh. really a tech person. So I was like, oh. Okay, so now I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, I know cause there is a Chrome extension. We're going to talk about Chrome extensions in a minute. But the thing, the issue with Chrome extension, um, this particular, it's called uh, Chrome extension grid for Google Meet. I think that's what it's called. But what happened was in October, they updated it so that you should be able to see 49 participants on your screen. That being said, like you, you, there would be no need for the grid, but my understanding is also that they've had lots of problems and that's why they put that fix in um, so that you would not have to download that extension. But I want to say even with Zoom, Zoom pushes out an update almost every week. So 
sometimes if your kids, um, and I guess I'll talk about this in the next slide, um, you constantly have to check for updates because if the teacher has the most current update, mm. you know what I'm talking about? If the teacher That's has the most current- so true, yes. Right, so like, let's say you are using a new feature on Zoom and your the students in your class haven't updated theirs and downloaded it, they may not be able to see it or use it, right? So that's something that generally, like I always tell, like if we're doing a webinar or we're doing something like that, that's one of the first thing I say, always make sure you have the most recent Zoom client uh, downloaded or you know uh, app downloaded. I don't know if I helped at all with your question, Sally, but like I said, I'll be more than happy to, to ask you. another tech person that's more like uh, well-versed in Google Meet and see if they have any advice for me. Thank you. Um, so basically, Zoom, um, it sounds like you guys both know, you bo you're both pretty uh, savvy with Zoom. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about Zoom. I will say that if you're like going between, I've had students that go between a Google Meet and a Zoom and then you can't hear them. And what they need to do is go into the carrot here um, next to the microphone. And I, I can't do it because I'm presenting, but if you hit the carrot by the microphone, it'll say, um, you know, use built-in speakers. So there's microphone and speakers. So they'll need to click the one for their laptop in order for them to hear. I don't know why it does that between me, Google Meet and Zoom, but that is an issue. Sally, I feel like you had another question. I think I saw a light bulb. I did. It made me think of a question I had. Um, I also use Zoom for my nonprofit. It's a performing arts group, and and we're no. I know there's something in settings, but um, when they're playing their own music and they're they're playing the drums in the background, you can't hear the music anymore. Right. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, you need, let me see if I can. I'm gonna just stop sharing so that I can access my. Okay. So I'm gonna describe this to you. So hold on, let me see where it is. No. Oh, is it like okay. a background noise? There's something, some sort of setting you can do. Yeah, I I know, and I'm looking for I know I I was just talking about this setting the other day. I don't know why I can't find it. I mean, I could email this to you too. Yeah, I don't want to more. keep you like. You, yeah, you know it's what? okay. But honestly, like, I do want to answer your questions, and I do know the answer to this. I no, can't remember which one it's under, but when you click on the box, there is a little part, like a little box on the bottom that says, like, um, like something audio. Where is that? In any event, I can I can just um, I can email it to you or snap a picture of it and take it to you, but. We can go we can go back to the next slide because i don't i don't want to keep you guys yeah. any okay. longer okay so back to the presentation um okay so i love this you can either have a nice evening or you can help your child with their math homework you can't have both <laughs> i don't know if anybody else feels this way but oh, yeah. math i think is the hardest subject in school just because they've changed their style of teaching it so much and they want their students to think more critically and be able to attack a problem from many different ways. And it doesn't matter if your kids in kindergarten or they're a senior in high school, they, they all have, um, you know, this, this, these issues. So I want to just say before we get into the apps here, um, of course, Khan Academy is the mainstay for math. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Khan Academy, you can subscribe to their channel. And what's great is you can look up, you know, how to add, you know, you, Naomi, you said your son is in fourth grade. You can look up how how they now decide to do um, long division. Or, you know, if, if your child's in high school, you can look up linear inequalities or I don't know, whatever my daughter's doing in algebra two. So I would always recommend um, Khan Academy because what's interesting is they also have videos based on like, the math video for a fourth grader is three minutes long. So that's like, 
you know, something that your child can watch or you can watch and be like, okay, I, I think I could, I think I could do this. Um, for some of the more complex ones for high school, they have like 10 and 14 minute videos. So what was I, the name of that? Khan, Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. K-H-A-N, okay. And then academies. It's, it's, yeah. you, can, you can actually just Google it, but I think like going on YouTube, the videos show you step-by-step -step how to do a problem. And a lot of times they're problems that come directly from the math book, which is really helpful. Um, so now I just want to chat about these two apps. So PhotoMath, um, these are available for iOS and Android. I don't like, you know, that they charge 10 and $20 a month, but what's great is you can just take a picture of the problem and it'll show you how to solve it. The $10 a month comes in, I think when it's more complex to solve. Like if you type in two plus two is four, or I don't know, like 26 divided by, you know, I don't know, 3.2, it'll probably show the breakdown of how to do it. Um, so you could use it as a partner with Khan Academy. I think, and we'll, I'll just go to, to Mathway. I will say that, you know, my daughter who is uh, in high school, you know, I'm not, I'm not spending the $20 a month on this, but what's great about Mathway is kids can use this to check their answers. Some teachers actually grade their homework. So, you know, kids are learning, they're going to make mistakes. I think if your teacher's grading, you know, your child's math homework, if they're older, Mathway is a good way to make sure you at least got the problem right. And then you can go through and see, you know, like maybe on Khan Academy or something, but my daughter does use it to check her answers. And what's great about Mathway too, is um, it has all these different types of math, whether you're doing calculus or you, even chemistry is on here, which I thought was kind of cool. And I mean, the $20 a month, if it, it's cheaper than, than having a tutor anyway. So if you wanted to spring for it, you could do that too. So let's talk about tech helpers. These are, this is my favorite part. Um, the one thing that kids can use is picture in picture. Sometimes if you are on, if you're doing work on your phone or you, you know, you're on your, your laptop, um, you can download, do you, do you all know how to download a Chrome extension? Do you know what a Chrome extension is? Okay. Naomi's shaking her head. No, I didn't know either. I had to learn. So I'm going to show you guys that these can be really helpful for your kids. So picture in picture is the first one. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to exit out of this. Not exit. There we go. Okay. So what you do is you, so you just go to the Chrome web store, right? You do it on the Chrome browser. And when you go to the web store, you can download Chrome extensions. And if you, if you can see up here in the corner um, of my screen, you see the little K and this little, the Bitmoji and Zoom. These are all little Chrome extensions that live next to the space bar. So what you can do is you can type in, um, like I'm gonna show you how to use Kami. Kami is the next slide. This is my favorite, favorite Google Chrome extension. And I'm gonna tell you why. How many times, it doesn't matter if your kid's in pre-K or your, your kid's a senior in high school, they're gonna get worksheets, right? So worksheets like from back in the day is basically like a ditto, right? So, I mean, I don't know how you all, you know, uh, manage that, but what Cami does is like, originally we have to download it, print it out, have your kid fill it out, take a picture of it and then upload it to the Google uh, classroom. What Cami does is you down, you could see here, I already added the extension. Um, I'm just going to move this over for a little bit. Okay. Um, you can see I add it and it lives up here. So I'm going to go on to classroom and show you how to use it. So this school, this um, particular Chrome extension actually allows you to open the worksheet your child can complete the worksheet and submit it to Google Classroom all in one step, which I think is great. So once you basically like if you, 
you click on it, it says remove here because I've already downloaded it, but basically it just says, you know, add to Chrome, you would click it and then the icon would appear up here next to the space bar. So what we'll do is we'll go to my daughter's um, Google Classroom. Oops, sorry. Oh, let's move this a second. So I'm going to go to her classwork. So let's see. Assignments. Okay, let's see if this is, okay, is this a Google Doc? So this one's a Google Doc. Sorry. And interesting, this little thing is called the hamburger. <laughs> the other one on the other side is called the waffle, which I think is so funny. So let me just go, sorry, let me just go back to my daughter's classes. I'm going to go down here to chemistry. Hopefully she has a ditto in here. So we're done, we're done. Okay. So you could see my daughter's terrible handwriting. <laughs> she admits it. She's like, my handwriting is terrible. So her teacher assigned this worksheet. What she did was she opened it in Kami. So you can, if you have an iPad, you can just use your finger or a stylus. Um, you can use a mouse, you can use um, a drawing tablet, any of those things, and you can write on here. And then once you're done, because you opened it with Kami, you could see over here in the upper right hand corner. Oops, hold on, I got to move this. Um, here, wait a second. It'll say like this one she already submitted, but you, there's a little button up here that says submit. So you can just submit it right it'll go right into the like the teacher's inbox so that they can. So that's why I absolutely love, love, love Cami. Um, let's go back to the presentation. Okay. So picture in picture, this Chrome extension, you can have a video and then you can drag it anywhere on the screen and maybe, you know, your son or daughter might need to take notes or write something about it and they can watch it and write at the same time. So that's picture in picture. Cami, we just talked about. The other thing that's great about Cami too is as you can see here on the screen, um, you know, sometimes you don't need to write something but you can add a comment. So I think that's really helpful. Um, so Grammarly, I don't know if, if you guys know this, but once your kids probably start or in middle school, they really don't do a lot with grammar. Um, I was kind of surprised when my seventh, my daughter's seventh grade teacher said, we don't, if we get to grammar this year, you know, we do, but there's a chance we won't, which I was kind of shocked about. Um, but Grammarly is a great app that you can download. It's free. Um, you know, it's like a little, so you could see the green circle. It basically lives in the bottom right hand corner. It helps with email, um, any kind of Google Doc or any kind of uh, app that you open. Grammarly can check it. So basically it helps with spelling and grammar. And as you know, in the English language, there are so many homophones, two, two and two. That's just like the one that everybody basically. Um, but if you think about rain and rain, I mean, there's so many words that are homophones. Um, I will say though that if your child has a district issued computer, sometimes they do block these extensions. So you might have to be mindful of that. But I just wanted to put it out there that, I mean, I use Grammarly all the time. I'm actually very good with grammar, but you know what? Nobody's perfect. And um, I think it's a great, a great tool to use. Duelist. Um, Duelist is a great app that helps you split the screen in two. I think it's hard for kids, especially when they're younger, to navigate to try to split up the two screens so that they can cut and paste or, you know, read a document and then write in another. So this particular extension helps you split the screen. All you have to do is click it next to the space bar and it'll split it for you. 
Um, if your child has a Chromebook, what's great is you don't even have to download it. You just need to click Alt plus this uh, ellipse. I don't, I don't know what that's called. I'm just going to call it a squiggle. So if, if you hit that one, it moves it right, or the other one moves it left. Otter. Otter is one of my favorite apps. Um, it's free. It functions as a virtual assistant. It records and transcribes in real time for up to 40 minutes. I use it for my lectures um, at school when my professor's talking. Um, even if it's for an hour, at the 40 minute mark, I just hit it again and it starts recording again. You get free 600 minutes per month. And you can search by keywords. You can see here, um, you know, my professor was talking. These are all the words you can search by. You can actually search by any word. Um, but what's great is this is pretty stellar in doing the transcription. However, if two people are talking or it cuts out, sometimes it doesn't transcribe perfectly. But what's great is it retains the audio. So right here, this is where it is in the conversation. So if I were to click on the play button, I'd be able to hear my professor talking. And you can actually, if you needed to, you can make an edit and change it. Um, so I love it for note taking, especially for older kids. Sometimes it's hard to pay attention and take notes at the same time. Uh, Otter allows you to listen and it takes the notes for you. Um, I think it's also great for younger kids. Naomi, if you, if your son or daughter that's younger, when they first start reading and writing and they're doing their writing assignments, it's hard for kids to like, they have ideas in their head about what they want to write, but uh, it's hard for them to get it down fast enough because they're not really great at writing or typing, right? So what they can do is just speak into Otter and Otter will record it all for them so that they remember, you know, what their ideas were. So I think that's really helpful. I would say the only caveat to Otter is that if you're on a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet and, you know, the teacher's talking and you want to record it, you'll need to use an iPad or some other device because when you're actually on the call, you can't use Otter simultaneously. So that's one of the only caveats to this, but I still think it's really wonderful. Um, so I just wanted to wrap it up. Um, definitely expand your support circle. I think it's really important during the pandemic, but I think it's just really great in general. Um, if you have some kind of group, like I'm fortunate enough, I live in a walking district, we have no busing. So a lot of parents got to meet each other, like dropping their kids off at school in the morning. Um, but if you live in a district where there's busing and maybe you don't know the parents, it's great to have some type of group where you can just be like, did anyone like have problems with the math homework? Like you can commiserate, you can ask questions. Um, if your kids are younger, you can set up virtual play dates or a lunch table. If you're working from home, um, you can set up like a virtual lunch table with your kids. Um, I would recommend if they're young kids, no more than four kids, but maybe they can have like a virtual lunch with a friend, which I think is really nice. Um, if you obviously you may not have any of these parents uh, numbers or emails or anything, but what you can do is reach out to the teacher and say, hey, you know, I'd really like to connect with some of the parents. Um, maybe you can, you know, send something around so that maybe we can connect on like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or whatever platform works for you. Um, I think it's also important to have a family meeting and discuss how everyone can help around the house. Everyone can help with something. And that makes, uh, you know, your job hopefully a little bit easier. Uh, of course, talk with your kids. Uh, I think it's hopeful, especially with boys or older kids, to work on something while you're talking or talk in the car. When your kids are older, they know the ride's going to end and they don't have to look at you. So it's like a win-win. Um, if your child is having issues uh, or, or, or they're, they're having a hard time coping, make sure you reach out to the school counselor. Every school pretty much has a school counselor, a social worker, someone that can help you and your child. They can schedule a Zoom meeting with your child um, or with you. It's, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to have. Um, the other thing too is have your kids express themselves. Maybe they like journaling or art, music, physical activity, anything that can help them um, to de-stress and unwind. Um, connect with nature. Research shows that um, being outside reduces stress and anxiety. 
Uh, also, if your kids are having issues with eye strain, some people believe in blue light glasses. They're available on Amazon for under $20. Another thing too is I switch, I was having issues. Um, I was getting a lot of headaches. So what I did was I switched my computer to dark mode and that's actually helped a lot. Um, just some other resources, common sense media. This is great, Naomi, for um, not only does it give you information on like parental controls, like movies, books, and safety tips, but it also has podcasts for kids, which I thought was really cool. I'm a big podcast fan. Um, and of course, PBS, they have many great articles and tips. So I just wanted to open it up to you guys. If you had any questions for me, comments, feedback, um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Let me write your name down here. Sure. Yeah, I'm just going to save your oh. contact information as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're going to write it down because honestly, every time I give a workshop, I'm like, please contact me. I never get a contact. So if you if you have Watch a question, out what you wish for. <laughs> no, that's OK, Sally. I'm, I'm really happy to answer either of your questions at any time. It's really it's been a trying time. I'm hoping this is, you know, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but who knows how this is going to go from here, right? Like virtual learning for kids in school, like may be here on some level, like look at what happened. Like, you know, in my district, there were no snow days and the teachers and the kids and the parents were all mad, right? Because, you know, you need a break. It, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see how things develop and change as we, as we move forward. But in some ways it's been good. It's forcing somebody of my age to learn tech a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. and it's going to enhance my teaching and then also to have people who live far away in our program. Right. Running it virtually. So there are advantages. No, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Naomi, did you have any other questions? Um, I don't have any other questions, but I do experience zoom fatigue. <sighs> um, um, at my clear state, I'm in the Department of Teaching and Learning, and I teach teachers. And so it's a lot being online all the time and then constantly trying to make sure that my children are logged in, logged in on time, helping my four-year-old. He needs the most help with um, mm -hmm. the teacher wants him to write letters and identify numbers and count this. And he has like all these wow. songs playing. So I'm like in a meeting for work, department meeting. This one's the one at. So it's just a lot right. to juggle. And I also have a two-year-old who's very busy. Oh I, have my all, I have all boys. Oh. And so <laughs> I have all boys and they're all busy. And so it's just been a lot with this wow. uh, pandemic being home. I miss going to University Hall in my office and just being around, you know, my peers, you know, my colleagues, it's just my kids all day, every day, all night. <laughs> Did you guys hear the news this morning, though, that Biden said that there's going to be enough shots for everyone by the end of May? Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty exciting. We'll see. As I lift up my left arm, I had my first shot yesterday, and it's it's definitely sore. Like, I couldn't sleep on it. You know, wow. I was like, intramuscular, but um, I'm not complaining. It's, I'm just. Did you get the Moderna? I know my kids got Moderna and I have Pfizer. Pfizer. Um, but whatever you have is just awesome, you know. I think there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel for sure. Yeah, I agree. But I can't imagine having little kids at home. My kids are grown. Like I was I can't. I know. I give you a lot of credit, Naomi. Seriously. Like my kids are sixth grade and and tenth grade, and I'm just like. And I still, you know, I go into the office now once a week and even still, I'm just kind of like, I got to get out of here. You don't seem old enough to have kids that old. Oh my God. If I told you how old I was, you wouldn't believe it. You have like no wrinkles. Wow. It, it's cool. Okay. So, you know, on Zoom, it has the touch up your appearance. You know, I haven't in the very, very beginning when somebody told me about that, I haven't touched it in ages. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it, the touch up your touch up my appearance works great. <laughs> I'm a lot older than I look. That's so funny. Thanks, Sally. 
So are you a are you a staff member at Montclair or are you ADP? What is ADP a sponsor for this? What okay, so I'll just give you a quick little history. Okay, so the ADP center was start like we uh Montclair State received money for um you know educational technology since we're a CEHS and the center was started from that money. However, like, you know, years ago, we don't, we don't receive any more money from them, um, but we still retain the name. But basically, we help pre-service teachers. So Naomi, a lot of times, like if you have, pre you, you're teaching pre-service teachers, correct? You can yes. use, right, and you can use the ADP Center as a resource. We do educational technology workshops for pre-service teachers. What pre-service, excuse me, teachers? What does like, that mean, It's a teacher in the teacher uh, ed program. In our oh, teacher ed program, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, I know um, the director very well. I when I when we were on campus, I would be in ADP all the time, um, setting up to teach in one of the rooms. Eleven is it eleven forty? One of those rooms, I always had seminar class. I, I hear in. the two year old. Yep, that's him. And um, you know what? I always had problems with Tracy bringing down the overhead. Oh like, yeah, punching it on a wall so it could come down so I could do like my my talk during class and so anyway I never mastered that and then the pandemic had hit so I really didn't master it so I'm looking forward to go back on, going on campus but yeah I know about all the programs for the pre-service teachers and the workshop trainings but my teachers they're all they're all young mm -hmm. um I'm young but they're younger than me and um this semester I have undergraduate I have 14 we're doing seminar two and so they are all familiar with ADP if they need to borrow a laptop um, you know, that they can put in a request. So they're pretty much good this semester. I had them last semester, which I love. Like I was able to loop my class. So it, it works out. I'm going to mute Great. now because <laughs> she's so I, calm. I know. I would just be like a deer in the headlights. I That's can't even, like really when my kids impressive. were young and then my kids would scream, like I couldn't even think straight. <laughs> so I give you a lot of credit, Naomi. But the one thing I did want to just mention, like if, you have pre-service teachers that can't attend a workshop, you can go on the on YouTube to the ADP Center for Learning Technologies. We have tech tips and we also have these workshops recorded. So if they miss a workshop, they can still catch it on the YouTube channel. So- You have that, to have like an access code or like, can I go too or no? You're not from uh, Montclair State, no. Sally? Okay, no. you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm working off of my computer that's not, issued by the school and i can access it so i'm guessing you should too if you can't you what's know, it called adp the YouTube? adp center for center. learning technologies okay. if you, and you could just subscribe to it when you go on youtube okay i got this i think our tech guy sent us the link to this for our school the head of tech oh cool so i don't know i i always hop on because i'm not techie so i always try to learn you know Right, it's all trial by fire. I'm this. You I'm know Nearpod, huh? Do you know Nearpod? Yes. I just started like learning that. I was like one at a time. Pear Deck is next, and then Boom Cards. But I'm like, I can only do a little bit of time because my brain only can take so much at a time. Right, and we actually host a workshop that discusses Pear Deck. Um, you could actually look at, uh, as I said, the the YouTube channel, and I think it's pr Presentation Innovations. They should have one that talks about Pear Deck. Okay. And if you can't find it, just email it to me. I can always like just oh, you know so sweet. copy the link and just put it in and send it to you. Thank you. I mean, because I teach PE and and health, and I haven't had to teach in the classroom all. I mean, I haven't had to teach any health. So I just do fitness classes. So I just have it so easy because I just, they come on, I mute them, I lead them in workouts and I've been doing that for 30 years. So, but now I'm starting to work one-on-one -on -one with the student, which is kind of forcing me to learn technology. And the father is like making jokes about me because he's, I'm so bad at the tech part of it. He's a tech guy. I'm like, well, you can help me out then, you know? Um, but yep. You'll get there. You just have to be patient with yourself. Right. Like when I started right. at the ADP Center for Learning Tech, like I'm not a techie person. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not terrible, but to learn all that stuff, like it took me like a hot minute to like get it all down. Like, no, it still, does. Yeah. I, mean, I I know more about Google than my daughter does because I've been <laughs> using it for in my school. You know, 
but like learning new stuff. I'm not the type to sit down on a computer all day. You know? Well, we're all on calls all day. Who wants to sit down on a computer, right? Yeah. So the other thing too, Naomi, before I forget, please, when we're, when we kind of get back to normal, come down and say hi. Okay. Yeah. That'd I be will. Awesome. I'm up on the third floor. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I don't remember my office number. I haven't been on <laughs> campus since March. <laughs> No, February like 28th or 27th, I was on campus and then the shutdown happened. So I haven't been there in over a year. So I don't forgot mm -hmm. my, my office number, but it's in my email on my email link, but I'll definitely stop down because I always come and bother Joe. Good. So I'll look for you. Yeah, he'll be happy to see you for sure. We've all been missing everyone, so. Yes. Are you guys completely virtual through the rest of the school year? I'm it virtual. It depends on the department. Like, okay. The ADP Center not just does workshops, but we also service um, all the students. We have a big like uh, curriculum resource center, which used to function as a library, but now it functions as a media space. So kids, you know, students can come in there and collaborate and use our technology. We have Google Jamboards. Um, but your your classes are all virtual, right? At Montclair right now? Yeah, I right. Well, the eight, it depends yes. on the instructor, right? Yeah. right. They're yeah, just starting to do mixes and stuff. I'm sorry. Um, some instructors are hybrid. Some are fully remote. Um, I don't know anyone who's fully on campus. Um, it's either remote or hybrid model. Yeah, so we have like Hawk Sync, Hawk Flex and all of that. I'm just straight Hawk online. That's my <laughs> Hawk online. <laughs> and I think it also depends like what, like I'm a staff member. I'm not technically a te like a professor or a teacher. So it just depends on the department you work in. Like, because I serve as students, I go in once a week. Um, Cause now like our center is open and we need to be there to service the students. But like university college or other places, they do everything online. All of their advisement, their scheduling, everything okay. is done online. So it just depends on, you know, yeah. how the department decided to, you know, go forward through the, the pandemic, so. Yeah, Tracy, I agree with that. My department in um, teaching and learning, everyone is pretty much remote from what I know, but like my department chair, she comes in once a week um, to her office, but like I have not been on campus. So my title is weird. I am um, an undergraduate program coordinator and clinical specialist. So I'm faculty but it's like I'm staff. It's it's like weird. I teach. I have two master's degrees. I don't have my PhD, so I'm not like a tenure. My my position is not a, a tenure track position. It's a non tenure track position. I left the classroom. I was a teacher for 14 years. I applied for this job at Montclair State. I'm an alum of Montclair State, so I got the job, and I've been here the last four years um, with the Department of Teaching and Learning. Cool. That's awesome. Oh. So, you thinking about getting your PhD? No. No? Maybe when they get a little older. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard. Okay, no, I, I... All right, guys, I'm going to head out. Thank yeah. you. Nice meeting you. Nice Appreciate meeting it. you, too, Sally. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Bye. So, Naomi. Um, yes. Yeah, I'd, when we're back, I'd love, like, come down. We'll have coffee or something. That'd be really nice. I'd love yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be great. They have the little kiosk right there hopefully that'd be open we could grab something or go to that'd be great somewhere I, oh i saw they have panera bread now mm -hmm. on campus it's beautiful it's yeah. so lovely I would and love college to, hall's nice i would love to go there so you, okay so cool. you've been to panera already yeah i have i get what's great is because like i when i'm at school even though it's only once a week like i go on the panera app i pick what i want they, they have a very limited menu right now but i pick yeah. what i want I, I, I send my order in and I walk over to college hall and it's sitting there ready for me to pick up. And I just oh. go back to my office. It's great. Office. And I get out for a walk too, which is right. Nice. And I miss going out for a walk, like on my lunch, I will go out in university hall around that big circle mm -hmm. and I will walk like four times. That would be like my exercise plus walk to my car. And so since the pandemic, I'm not really getting, well, right now it's cold. I have a park across the street where I live. So once the weather breaks some, I'll be going back to the park. But I, that was like my little exercise, Tracy, I would get in. And like, I've gained a few pounds due to this pandemic. I haven't been going out. We have a exercise um, like gym where I live. But when the pandemic happened, they shut it down. They put a lock on the door. So we couldn't get 
get in. Now it's open, but now I'm like nervous to go in there because I used to bring my kids 